Welcome to why Angular is the best framework for a design system. I know that this talk might anger a few people, but that is fine as I want to challenge some basic assumptions. My name is Jan Gregerhem, and I work at Comptas as a consultant. So story time, why is this important to me? So I was placed at the company, medium-sized power company, Elvia, as a consultant, where I had the recent push to digital solutions. In Norway, we have recently gotten the automatic power reading system so that we wanted a new system to help us work with that. So in short, they needed rapid development of new systems. But there was a problem. There was no shared design language at this organization. And they kept copying and pasting code in between projects. And that might be fine for really small teams like one to two products, but that this organization was getting out of hand. And one of the reasons was when we needed a login system. One team created the login system and it worked great, but all of the other teams just copied that code and the bugs. And suddenly we didn't know where to fix the bugs anymore. And the design started to drift as well. So in short, making new sites took too long as we kept reinventing the wheel. And we just wanted a consistent design with a consistent user experience at a high development speed. And we needed to support a lot of features. So in short, we needed a solution. And probably given the name of this talk, you probably can guess what the solution was. It was a design system, which is, if you're unfamiliar, the single source of truth for, among other things, font, color, sizing. It's a guide to UX and design, how to place elements, your branding, your styles, everything. And, and it's also a collection of reusable components. And another way of saying it is that design systems are the solution to the problem of how to enable rapid development and innovation while maintaining a consistent user experience and design. And a really famous example of a design system is material design. This is Google's adaptive design system, which just means that you can adapt it to your own organization's needs. So you can restyle all the components to what you need. And there's a really good documentation slash website with the high level guides, but also directly on button with a demo, everything you need to understand what the button is, but also how to place it within the application that is an often forgotten part of a design system. So back to the story. We had several websites already de developed in different frameworks. This is getting challenging. And we needed a solution that worked everywhere. But how to create it? CSS is only a start. It's a good start, but at some point you will need logic for pop-ups, tables, galleries, and more complex elements. And it needed to be easy to use in all projects, even if it's Vue, Angular, or React. And it needed good documentation and good marketing, another aspect that's easily forgotten. A design system that nobody uses is useless. So we crunched the numbers, looked at our alternatives, and my neighbor is drilling, of course, perfect looked at our alternatives and landed on a two-part system. First, we had a pure CSS score, which is written in SAS, which boils down to a series of CSS classes that you put on HTML elements. And a component library on top in JavaScript, TypeScript, or something. That looks more visually like the CSS score with a yet-to-be-determined component library that together becomes the design system. And, but what is a component library? This might be new to some of you. This is ready to use components like table, pop-up, and select more complex element, elements that need some kind of logic or JavaScript at some point. And those are styled from the CSS course to try to concentrate all the CSS in one place. But remember, the golden rule that CSS is cheap, JavaScript is expensive. The same amount of CSS is easier on the browser and will have higher performance than the same amount of JavaScript in number of bytes. So create as much as possible with CSS as the limitations of CSS is a good thing. Less hacky JavaScript workarounds, which is always nice. But we still needed a framework. 
as pure web components were still too basic when we were starting out. So we crunched the numbers, looked at alternatives, read a few blogs, and looked at what we were using already, and we landed on Angular. Why did we choose Angular? It has the most powerful CLI, which gives us built-in library support. It can compile to web components, which gives us components that we can use in Vue and React. It has an opinionated architecture, which means that the Angular team has an opinion on how you should structure your application, which means that projects are similar. And it also makes it easier to swap developers between projects and create a shared uh, component library. And you have a reduced bundle size with Angular 9 and Ivy, which has been one of the bigger problems with Angular, which has now been addressed. And you have something called the Angular CDK or Component Development Kit. This is low-level building blocks created by the Angular team to help you create a component library. And here you have, for example, drag and drop, virtual scroll, and a lot of other low-level, really cool building blocks. And you also have a dependency injection system, which gives you reusable services. And it's a complete framework, so we have everything we need to create our application, and thus less fighting over dependencies. And we have something called schematics, or Angular schematics, which allows us to automatically install and update our entire design system. What do I mean by that? By running one command, you will be able to install the entire design system without having to do anything more, and you're up and running in minutes. This command will automatically install and run something called Angular Schematic, which boils down to some code we have written with a framework Angular has created that allows us to modify files like package files, TS files, HTML files, all the files we need to do any change we want for it to work. So setting up a new project is really, really easy. And you can do the same between major versions of your design system so that you can fix breaking changes for your users. And that is what the Angular team has been doing between Angular 9 and 7 and with the ng-update command. And you can also generate the entire component library when you're starting out with one command, so you're up and running in minutes. And we built this on top of Angular Material, which gives us some really useful components out of the box, like table, select, and model that we didn't have to create on ourselves. So we didn't have to reinvent the wheel, which is really nice. We just styled those components their own style. And then we have a more visual representation again, with the CSS core at the bottom, with a component library on top in Angular that together becomes the design system that are used by all external systems or external to the design system, internal to the company. But what goes into the component library? First, try to put everything in the CSS core. But at some point, you will find something that requires logic. And that is the time when you move it to the component library. Simple as that. We try to keep a bare minimum of CSS in the Angular project. And then we have testing. CSS testing is hard to impossible. You can use, for example, visual regression testing with, for example, backstop.js, which allows you to take your CSS classes, apply them in a browser, take a screenshot, do the same for new classes, and compare those images pixel by pixel to see if there's any difference. This will cover some scenarios, but not all of it, so you will not get the confidence you want from testing, or at least testing the CSS part but test everything in the component library. This is a low-level building block for an organization, so unit tests and end-to-end -end tests on everything with, for example, Cypress. And you should publish everything using a semantic versioning system that helps safeguard against an unexpected breaking changes for your users. And we were using something called GitHub Actions, which allowed us to automatically deploy uh, this um, any change so that each merge to master directly led to one publish. And this gave us the shortest possible turnaround from a bug request coming in to a fix going out. And it's really important that you make this automatic with, for example, GitHub action. So it happens consistently each single time. And then we have documentation. Each part of the design system needs to be self-documenting. 
And we, for example, put uh, the best practices in the CSS core. And here you can see the actual CSS core. Just a heads up, this is not the design system you should be using. I'm just showing you it so you can see it more visually. This is an internal design system. But here you have the CSS core with the introduction, and you can actually use the CSS core independently if you have a really small application. And then we have the guide on, for example, a button with when to use it, when not to use it, example, code, everything you need to get started. And with the component library on top, with the auto install command feature up front, really important, and uh, the documentation on, for example, one component with how you should use it, uh, code examples, live examples, everything. What are some more general Angular tips and tricks we found during our development? The first one is to always, or at least consider change detection strategy on push. This allows you to take control over when change detection happens and reduce re-render so that if you have a big component, not every single change within that component will lead to that component being re-rendered. So we'll get higher performance, especially on larger elements. And input as much as possible as HTML. Like uh, you probably use the input into a component with a property like this. And it, that's fine for most cases, but at some point you will want to input some HTML, like make the component a wrapper or more configurable. That is when you can use something called content projection, where you're inputting a new element within the opening and closing tags of a component. And you can take this further by using something called ng project as plus select, a sort of hidden feature in Angular, where you can input several HTML elements and receive them independently within, for example, a shell component. So you can receive the header and main separately. This is also the same as slot from web components, if you know about that, or named slots. And then we have view encapsulation. Hot topic, a lot of opinions. My personal preference is to have it on and even considering enabling Shadow DOM so we fully encapsulate the component. As the design system should be the single source of truth, and people shouldn't go around modifying every piece of CSS you have. And if you do as me, enable view encapsulation, you should also consider setting a display property on all of your components on the host pseudo class so that you can add margins and paddings directly to that component. And that is something you can set up when you're generating components with Angular CLI 9.1, I think. So it's available now. But what about some more general tips and tricks? The first one is do not use Internet Explorer 11. It's 2020, it's about time we kill that browser. Support Chrome, support Firefox, support Opera, support Edge, and support Safari. But do not support Internet Explorer, as you will lose out on critical features you really need to create a good design system, like CSS variables, grid, and flex. And on the topic of CSS variables, embrace them. At the root level of your application, define all of your primary colors, secondary colors, sizing, padding, and all important variables as CSS variables, so you can reuse them later really easily without having to import any SAS file. And this means that the users of your design system will actually use the correct values as it's so much easier to use it. And this will also allow you to dynamically switch to dark theme as you can change colors on the fly. It's amazing. And then we have conventional change log. This is the Angular team's way of structuring commit messages, where you have a type of change, feature, area, pop-up, and actual change, a really nice way to structure commit messages so that it is consistent. And the same for bug and refactor. And use SOS and all the features it gives you on top of CSS, making it so much easier to write a big CSS-based application which is what you're doing when you're creating a design system. And embrace TypeScript and all the types it gives you. And even consider enabling strict null checks so you will no longer get those annoying undefined null errors in production. And adapt Kanban. A design system team needs to be able to adapt really quickly to changing requirements, usually within hours. And locking down that team for a two-week scrum sprint doesn't make any sense. And apply prettier. So that it actually looks like your code is being written by one person 
and you stop fighting of a cold formatting and go open source. You're already standing on the shoulders of giants and most if not all of your dependencies are already open source. Give back, give the world another good example of a design system. But now the sun is starting to set and this presentation is starting to reach its end. But there's a few things I want you to keep in mind when you're creating a design system. The first one is that design system on mobile, native mobile, is not easy. You can't use CSS, JavaScript, or HTML, so this approach will not work properly. And if this is something you have to support, look into design tokens, which is a more abstract design system. And do not use Angular if everyone knows Vue at your organization. Like if you're working at a company where everybody's really good at Vue, it might be a bad idea to force everyone into an unfamiliar framework. But if it's a toss-up between Angular and Vue, choose Angular as it has more features that will help you create a good design system and component library. But know that Vue is a good second choice. But be really mindful about choosing React as it can't properly compile to web components until React 17. But consider also, if you have a really small component library, to make it directly as web components. The specification has really matured. And a really good case for this is material design. Because material design's component library is known as Angular Material, Beautify, and Material UI. The same components and code duplicated several times. This is something the material design team has been looking into with material components, web components. They're recreating all of their components as web components. And here you can see button. This is still in alpha, beta, or some early version, so you can't use it in production yet. But no, it's a possibility. And you know, consider using just material design directly. If you're at a really small company with like one or two products or solutions, it might not be a good idea to invest in a design system, because design systems work better if you have a lot of teams working together creating separate solutions. So just using pure material design is an option you have to consider. And know that creating a design system is not easy, but you will benefit greatly from doing it, and you will love that you took that decision. But that means we're reaching the end of our story, and this helped us to rapidly develop new systems while maintaining consistency across the organization. So this is a story of success. But that means we're reaching the end of the presentation. Thank you for listening to me talk, and I hope you learned something new and exciting today, and that you will push for a design system at your organization. My name is Jan Gegerhem, and if you want to hear more of me talking about my favorite technologies, I have, due to what's happening currently, started my own YouTube channel, Curious Programming. Thank you. <laughs>